Okay, uh, so today we have a patient who had lost about 230 pounds with diet and exercise. It's pretty impressive. But you can imagine with that amount of weight loss, his skin's not gonna bounce back and snap back 100%. So he has some excess skin and fat of his tummy, hips, and backside, and inner thighs. He exercises a lot. His weight is plateaued at about 230. And now he comes for elective surgery for his tummy, hips, and backside. And I would suggest what we do is what's called a circumferential 360 lower body lift. I'm gonna make an incision from the middle of his back, around his hips, to the center of his tummy. I'm also gonna tighten up the six pack muscle and get him a nice flat tummy, get him a nice svelte or skinny or V-shaped line on the sides, lift the buttocks and get rid of a lot of the wrinkles on the buttocks. Then we're gonna move on to the medial thighs, the inner thighs. He doesn't have excess skin and fat that goes down to the knee, he just has it isolated in the upper inner thigh. So I'm gonna first do liposuction on the inner thigh, then I make an incision from the groin, about maybe a half to a third down the inner thigh and get rid of that elliptical area of skin and fat on the inner thigh. Then we're gonna do some liposuction on the neck to get him a more chiseled neckline. The first thing I'm gonna do is make an incision on the upper portion of this butterfly incision, like that. And again, males carry their weight much higher in the pelvis than the females. So you can see this waddle of excess skin and fat on the sides there. That's our main target on this patient. So by making this incision here, I'm gonna dissect down. I'm gonna dissect, in fact, all the way down to here to free up these wrinkles on the buttock. And then I'm gonna lift the buttock up and I plan to remove all the excess skin and fat in between these two solid green lines. Then what I'm gonna do is lift this up and get rid of all that excess skin and fat, get rid of these wrinkles on the buttock, flip them over, and then do the front part, which is the tummy. Then we're gonna continue on the front, and what I'm gonna do is, on the front side, make an incision that comes nice and low down here, and we're gonna go pretty low in the pubic region. We're gonna go across there, and then out to the other side. If I just came in to crease this fold, he'd be left with all the skin and fat in the pubic region, so that wouldn't be good, so I go very low. Then I'm going to dissect all the way up here to his rib cage here and his rib cage there to the bottom of the sternum right in there. I'm going to find his six pack muscles and I'm going to use permanent suture. Bring all this in, tighten this, plicate this. This is called a corset abdominoplasty, so all that is going to be brought in. And then what I plan to remove with that dissection, freeing up all that tissue, tightening that muscle, is all the skin and fat from this bottom solid line to this top solid line right in here. He has a little bit of curvature with his back. We'll get out a little bit more on this side than this side comparatively, but everything in between here will be removed, okay? And then everything from this top red line will be brought down to this lower green line. So this will be brought down. Then I'm gonna move on to the inner thigh, and you can see his quads are extremely well-developed right out in here. He does a lot of biking, and that's why his quads are so well-developed. But with his significant weight loss, again, he lost about 230 pounds. He has skin and fat on the inner thigh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an inner incision on the inner thigh in there, and I'm gonna remove, at minimum, this excess skin and fat on the front half, and that same amount on the back half. So on the inner thighs, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be doing a little bit of liposuction to remove some of the uh, excess fat uh, in the inner thigh. And then I'm gonna make an incision in the upper inner thigh, right in there like that. And then I'm gonna dissect posteriorly, and I imagine I'll be able to get rid of all the excess skin and fat from that front line to that back line. This middle solid line is where I want my incision to lay when we're done. So everything in between there will be removed, and our final scar line will be hidden on the inner thigh just like that. With his weight loss, he lost a lot of fat in his neck, but he's left with some residual skin. So what I'm gonna do is be doing some liposuction from basically the bottom of the jawline right in here to this outer perimeter of the neck right in there. And by removing the little bit of fat that's left in the neck and by wearing the garment after the surgery for about two weeks, he'll get a nice chiseled neckline. I don't think at his age and the amount of excess skin he has, he warrants or needs really a face or a neck lift. I believe the way I do it with the vaser and with the liposuction techniques that we use, he'll get a nice chiseled neckline. So let's go to the operating room and I'll show you how we do it here in Beverly Hills.
My incision here on the upper portion of the uh, lower back, and I've dissected down to the fascia, that's that layer of uh, tissue right above the gluteus maximus muscle, and then I dissected down to the buttocks, and my goal is to remove all these shrinkles and wrinkles underneath the buttock and raise and reduce the buttock up like that. And then I also use these towel clamps to measure the tension in the flat, feeling how tight it is or how loose it is. If it's tight, I'm gonna loosen up the towel clamp and resect a little bit less. If it's too loose, well, I'm gonna uh, extend my excision and uh, move the towel clamp so I can resect more. So these are my towel clamps on my proposed excision. I'm gonna remove all this and then put it all back together. All right, so I feel very confident in the ability to remove that. Just gonna free it up here a little bit more. And then we're gonna come across this specimen and uh, then start to close it. So we have opened it. Now we've dissected it, released it all, measured the tension in the flap, and now I'm gonna go ahead and close it. So what do you usually do is you usually use six layers of suture and um, I'm going to start here in the middle and take out the tension in the flap. And uh, again, we've measured it very carefully. So we're very confident we can bring all of this back together. There's my drain. Drain will stay in for eh, maybe about a week, 10 days, depending on the output. And then we'll remove that in the office. Again, I put one on the back, and sorry, one on each side of the back, so two on the back total, and then two on the front. So total of four drains for his body lift. These are absorbable sutures, and uh, we'll close this up for him. We'll tuck this drain and we'll pull it out from the front side. So if you stay tuned, you can see how I do that. And the lower body lift, which is basically an essentially extended tummy tuck with muscle plication in the middle, and we're gonna move on to the medial thigh. So this is the back side of the 360 lower body lift. on the wall is the belly button which I've skeletonized and uh, down here is the pubic region and now I'm going clear up here to the rib cage and I'm just dissecting on top of the fascia the six-pack muscle here and that will help me find the plane to go up to the uh, to the lower portion of the rib cage here and the heart here centrally so we're up on the ribs here already and now we're just going to come around to the uh, center portion the sternum over here, and then we can go ahead and uh, suture up our six-pack muscle. Pretty big guy, so uh, it takes a little bit to get up here. We're going to release these flaps again. These are from his back, those two flaps that just went down, and now we can get up to the upper portion of the abdomen there. You can see we're getting around it, but it takes a little bit to do it. Again, this is a big dissection field. It's a pretty large field and uh, lots of exposure. But uh, we need a lot of dissection to free up the tension on this flap. I've uh, placated the lower anterior abdominal wall from the belly button down to the pubic region. And it's really nice and tight here. You can see his uh, anterior iliac spine or his pelvic bone sticking out right here. And you can see that this is really nice and tight. You can see that this is pretty loose above the belly button. I haven't placated that. So I'm gonna bring in his waistline by about almost five inches. Uh, there's, you know, the zero mark and there's a five inch mark. So we're gonna bring that together. And uh, it's also called a corset abdominoplasty. It's the front part of the lower body lift. So I truly believe after a weight loss of, you know, in this case, 260 pounds, this muscle wall gets very weak. So you have to reinforce it with these permanent sutures. So I'm gonna now go from the belly button up to the xiphoid, bottom of the uh, sternum, and uh, placate and bring in this anterior abdominal wall with permanent sutures. So let's do it. 
All right. So I've plicated the upper portion of the abdomen. And uh, if you remember, I plicated it by about, or brought it in by about five inches. So it was previously about out to there on each side, and I brought it together. You can see it's nice and firm now. So the firm upper abdomen matches the firm lower abdomen, and uh, we've got an excellent result all the way from the xiphoid to the belly button, and the belly button down to the pubic region. And uh, now we're just gonna get rid of all this excess hanging skin by setting up the foundation of the body first. Now we can drape it with the excess uh, skin and fat, and by removing everything, you get it nice and tight. So here's the nice foundation of the anterior abdominal wall from the rectus uh, tightening uh, all the way from the sternum, bottom of the rib cage, all the way down to the pubic region. Just gonna free up a couple of adhesions. This sometimes happens when you bring the muscles together. It brings in this a little bit. So you just free it up to get even a tighter closure. And that just gives you a better lower body lift when you do that. So a couple of adhesions here and there. And now I'm just gonna redrape everything, bring everything nice and down for this guy. This is the uh, tummy, this is where the belly button was, where my left thumb is. The uh, abdomen, this goes out over the hips and then goes out to the buttocks. So you can see, pretty large specimen, even half the specimen is pretty large. So uh, this whole specimen now is free. And now we're gonna put it back here. And now we're gonna get them all closed up. So from the front side, you can see it's standard tummy tuck, but uh, I took off the swath of uh, excess skin and fat of lower anterior abdominal wall and now I'm gonna put it all back together. I'll finish with the front part of the abdomen, but the only thing missing is a belly button. So what I do is I drop a line from the uh, bottom of the sternum here to the midline of the pubic region, and then feel the top of the iliac crest, which is right about here, and then draw a line where my thumbs are, which are the top of the iliac crest, and right here where these two lines intersect, that's where his belly button should be. That's where everyone's belly button is. So check it out in the mirror tonight. Look at the top of your pelvic bone. Draw a line horizontally that comes across there. That's where your belly button should be. And of course it should be in the midline. So I'm gonna make an incision here. It's a male patient, so we're gonna make a circular belly button right there. And we're gonna pop out the belly button right there because that's where it should be. And uh, he'll get an excellent result. Um, and you can see he has a very, very flat tummy here and uh, excellent result after a 230 pound weight loss. So we finished with the uh, anterior portion of the uh, abdomen, the uh, anterior portion, but the tummy tuck portion of the uh, 360 circumferential lower body lift. You see how it's a nice flat belly. Uh, we placated the muscle, got his six pack nice and tight, and got rid of all that excess residual skin and fat of the anterior abdomen. So you can see he has almost a washerboard concave tummy now that goes from the sternum all the way down to the pubic region. The incision is nice and low. Uh, we also raised and reduced the pubic region, which is also a very important part of the uh, uh, 360 body lift on males and females. So now I'm going to continue on down and uh, do the uh, medial thigh lift and I'll show you how we do that too. Okay, so now I'm starting the uh, medial thigh lift, modified medial thigh lift because it doesn't go down all the way down to the knee, <coughs> but we still need to defat the, the inner thigh. So I defat the inner thigh by doing tumescent solution followed by liposuction. So right now I'm doing liposuction. The liposuction not only gets rid of the fat on the inner thigh, debulks that area, makes for a better thigh lift, but it also helps with the dissection. So on almost all of my uh, thigh lifts, I'll do liposuction. 
except for maybe the crescent dilate where I make the incision high up in the groin. But on this patient, it's going from the groin, maybe halfway or a third of his way down the uh, inner thigh to get rid of that upper inner thigh skin. So we're just gonna finish up on the lipo here, and then we're gonna make it our incision and get rid of the extra skin. So uh, we've completed the circumferential 360 lower body lift, and I also completed the uh, modified medial thigh lift with an incision from about mid to about two thirds of the way down the inner thigh, up to the groin, and a little bit posterior lift. So he's got nice tight thighs here now, no excess skin and fat, nice flat tummy, no love handles on the side, and you remember from the back side, his buttock now is raised, and there are wrinkles underneath the buttocks. So I think he has an excellent result here after his 260 pound weight loss, Nice tight thighs, his quads will show through now laterally, and uh, his uh, tummy looks awesome, as well as you know, love handles are gone, and the uh, backside looks really good. So we're going to be doing liposuction on the neck here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a tumescent solution here uh, to uh, minimize the bleeding, minimize the pain. Uh, and then I'm going to make a small incision underneath the chin and use the spatulated uh, liposuction cannula to remove a lot of the fat on the uh, inner portion of the neck here centrally, as well as in the lateral one third of the neck here. Uh, I'm going to make an incision behind the ear to approach that area.